Thank you for joining us for this second part of today's se session, our discussion session. And let me just update you on the discussion series schedule. Today we have those small one minute group and one minute video pitches that we'll play. And next week is where we really start to hear um, more in depth from our small working groups. So this will be in parallel sessions. Each group will give a seven minute presentation and we'll have three minutes of discussion. We'll be running these very much on time so that we'll post the schedule beforehand and people can have the option of moving in and out between different sessions to hear the talks they're most interested in. So that timing will be a little stricter about. And the following week, we have optional follow-up small group presentations. So each group has to do one presentation next week. And if they choose, they can do another presentation the following week to update us on things that they've learned in between. All right. An important announcement, uh, an exciting announcement. So we are now able to offer best project awards. We wanted to announce this earlier, but it took a little bit of finagling to get these awards in place. Uh, so these will be provided by the combined program at UMD. The top place team will receive 2,000 US dollars. The second place team will receive an award of, in the amount of $1,000. The award amounts will be distributed equally among group members. Uh, winning groups will be selected by a panel of judges who are experts from fields related to network epidemiology. And groups will be judged based on their final presentation, whether that's next week's presentation or the optional follow-up presentation, whichever is the last presentation that your group does, and slides, and the project abstract that we'll ask you to submit at the end of the series. A little bit of fine print here. Um, these awards will be made as honoraria when possible. Uh, there are some limitations in paying people, paying foreigners who are working in the US on visas. They can't receive such funds. So in those cases, we'll make them as travel awards so we can reimburse towards any scientific travel. Uh, we'll give you more information about this, but this is just uh, the little overview. We're really excited to do that. I know that you guys have been working hard and I want to be able to recognize your efforts. All right. Okay, so today's agenda. Next up, we'll have these one minute video pitches and then we'll follow up with some more information for our small group participants. A little more info about the certificate of completion and info and suggestions for next week's presentations. So with that, um, I'm going to invite Nick Monona, who is one of our co-organizers, who's going to share the video with us. Hi all, we're Team Animus and we're investigating the COVID-19 disease spread by simulating an ODE network model in small populations with different social and community structure configurations. In order to model disease spread amongst a population, we use the epidemic model shown. Individuals represent nodes and the equations governing the evolution of disease in individuals depend on their time evolving social graph. We explore the effect of different social distancing strategies on the epidemic dynamics by distancing nodes randomly versus in a targeted fashion. In addition, we explore how different time evolutions of social interactions and distancing affect the spread of the epidemic. This is the ASIM and DISC group with project titled Infection Percolation in the Presence of Asymptomaticity and Social Distancing. This project was inspired by the unknown level of asymptomatic infections and potential interactions between symptomaticity and the level to which individuals follow social distancing. 
Group members are Blake Williams, Nicholas Roberts, Upasana Dada, Ulrike Han. And our project will be using stochastic simulations and data that has already been collected to first, estimate appropriate probability distributions for use with a percolation model, and then to use said percolation model to explore outbreak probability and size as a function of asymptomatic case proportion and compliance with recommended social distancing. We are the controlled SIR group. Our idea is to have a controlled SIR model running on a network of cities. Each city I will have the typical metapopulation model, which is written in black. To incorporate interaction between the cities, we include the migration terms in blue, which represent incoming population flux from all other cities and outgoing population flux from city I to other cities. The red terms are control variables meant to represent the prevention effort. Alpha I represents City I's local effort to lower infection rate via measures like social distancing. The Rho, Sigma, and Tau terms represent the efforts to deter intercity travel. We would like to address questions regarding the interaction between the cities. For example, how badly can one city's poor prevention efforts ruin the efforts of the other cities? How do the results change if there is centralized versus localized control? And what is the appropriate cost functional to judge between different outcomes? Time permitting, we would also like to consider adding more components such as an exposed population or hospitalized population, and we would like to introduce stochastic effects. Our group is called Fitting Models to Flu Data. I'm Casey, and my group members are Malaysia, Milosh, and Julia. And our main idea is that the large amount of historical data on the seasonal flu provides a great testing ground in the search for accurate COVID-19 models. So our goal is to compare compartmental models for forecasting the seasonal flu and then apply the best of those models to try to forecast COVID-19 data. And so we're going to use data from the CDC that provides incidence data on the seasonal flu for the past 23 seasons. And our plan is to use data for the first W weeks to fit models and then use those models to forecast the remainder of the season. And so we're planning to start with basic models like SIR and its variants, and then if time permits, we would move on to more sophisticated models. We are designing two proposed studies to counter the harmful and essentializing narrative that racial health disparities in COVID-19 outcomes are largely due to endogenous factors such as pre-existing health conditions like diabetes. Proposed study one uses natural language processing on social media news data to explore the extent to which people attribute racial disparities in COVID-19 outcomes to endogenous rather than structural factors, like in these comments by the U.S. Surgeon General. Proposed study two aims to use agent-based modeling to demonstrate that external social forces alone, namely the ability to self-isolate as a function of socioeconomic status and cross group prejudice or homophily, can produce similar patterns of racial disparities even when equating the agent's baseline health. For instance, that the majority of the squares and a small percentage of the circles have the ability to stay home while some of the circles and all the triangles are frontline workers or otherwise unable to self-isolate. We expect to see a pattern where infection rates are substantially higher among the triangles and circles than among the squares, which is what we see in these data out of Chicago. If you're interested in this proposed research and have expertise in epidemiology or this type of agent-based model, we truly welcome your input. Similarly, if you have suggestions of models that may be readily adapted to our project, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Hello everyone, our group name is COVID Busters. The idea of our project is to study the effect of migrations across different cities localities and regions using agent-based modeling for the migration and transport patterns. The task is then to study different behaviors in different cities. For example, different cities having different level of lockdown restrictions and hygiene habits. Finally, we will try to see how the larger network of these cities continues to respond to the virus. The group members are Alteb Zafar, Owen Martin, Mubashir Khan and Ravi Sharma. Hello, this is Mahtar Amazonian, along with Sam Rosenblatt and Keshav Srinivasan. We'd like to tackle the problem of privacy with contact tracing apps and how to protect user privacy while still collecting useful data. The problem is to ascertain the type of data we need to store, how to store it, 
and how to infer the probabilities without invading privacy of the users. We aim to integrate multiple noisy pieces of evidence to improve accuracy of inferring the posterior probability of users' diagnosis variable. That is, to let each user know what is the probability of them being sick based on the given information. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tyler Prochno. I am introducing what was formerly Z Team Assigned 4 in uh, the Slack. We are now going by Network, Social, and Collective Behavior. That's kind of what we are going to start reading. Um, Sandra has been nice enough to post a few articles in our Slack page that we are going to kind of dive into and kind of better understand network and social norms and political policies that might imp uh, impact those things. Uh, so looking forward to learning and sharing some of our results with you guys. This is Team Infodemic Dynamics. We plan to conduct a case study of COVID-19 misinformation on Twitter. Anti-5G narratives have been circulating for years and have been attributed to coordinated disinformation campaigns. Recently, rumors and conspiracy theories linking 5G and COVID-19 have spread across social media with impacts including the destruction of cell towers, along with contributing to the growing infodemic accompanying the COVID-19 pandemic. This topic is well suited for studying multilingual information spread because 5G is a fairly unambiguous and distinctive term that is mostly consistent across languages. This will allow us to aggregate tweets by language and compare the narrative progression of 5G misinformation within and across different language speaking communities, which can act as proxies for cultural groups or countries. Our goal is to understand how narratives about 5G and COVID-19 have evolved over time and across languages and communities. Hello, I'm Rory Gilchrist in Chicago. Hi, I'm Jose Nicolás in Mexico City. Hi, I'm Sam Sherrill in Bloomington, Indiana. Hi, and I'm Phil Wynn from Burlington, Vermont. And we are the Life After Group. We are doing an analysis of beliefs about the world after coronavirus. So there's a lot of um, interest and speculation about how life will be different after um, we all emerge from the coronavirus pandemic. Um, some of the things that people are thinking about are the topics listed here. And so our plan is to survey people about um, what they believe about themselves and how others will behave after the coronavirus. Um, we're planning to administer around 20 questions and we're gonna collect demographic information in order to do kind of an exploratory analysis um, of similarities and differences in um, beliefs. Um, and we might do things like a co-occurrence network and some other analyses. This out-of-the-box project will explore the role of inclement weather in promoting stay-at-home policies that may help enhance social distancing. As an unintended effect, inclement weather could also dampen COVID-19 incidence rates in some regions. Just a few days ago, tragically, a major storm system hurled into the southern United States and wreaked havoc by prompting tornadoes, thunderstorms, and intense winds. The hypothesis will explore the role of regional inclement weather as an effect modifier while in concert with stay-at-home intervention policies. Using case counts as our outcome of focus, distribu distributed lag nonlinear mod modeling will be applied to account likely delay in potential disease transmission. We hope to observe measurable changes in risk over time with respect to an inclement weather event in selected locations with daily case instance reports, namely Washington, D.C. Hello, everybody. Network epidemic models seem very promising to better account for contact heterogeneities among individuals. Network models, however, may be quite expensive to run. Our team, Miguru at Compart Network, thus aims to provide a better understanding of the strength and limitation of both paradigms, with special focus on predicting cases for COVID-19. More precisely, our objectives are threefold. First, clarify what paradigm is better suited to what use cases. Second, explore when models of one paradigm can be translated to the other. 
ideally by running a few couples of models and comparing their results. And finally, explore if a mixed approach could combine the strength of both paradigms. Thank you for your attention. Hello everyone, we are team NG Slack Dynamics and our project is on understanding the dynamics of interactions between participants in the NetCovid workshop. Interactions in our case could be anything from sharing a paper, commenting on a post or reacting with an emoji in any of these Slack channels. We aim to first extract this content of all the chat Slack channels in our workspace and then use that to construct dynamic networks of communication between the participants. This can then be used to visualize the pathways of knowledge flow within the community of NetCovid workshop and also examine if there's any underlying process that can explain the whole dynamics of the system. Thank you. Our team will consider a university when it reopens and resumes classes. The students, faculty, and staff return to the university and resume their normal routine. In this scenario, the resurgence of the disease is probable in the form of a second wave. Our goal is to evaluate intervention strategies for campus in order to mitigate the resurgence of the disease. Such strategies include social distancing, conducting tests to identify infected people, quarantine, allowing limited number of people inside buildings, and other policies. We plan to consider a hierarchical model. The macro scale level will be a network of the flows between buildings, and the micro scale will model individuals inside the building. I'm Eric Chotel from the University of Waterloo. We'll be working with Herbert Sizek from India University and Peter Tevin from UC Santa Cruz. Our reading group is going to focus on dynamic network structure and its impact on disease modeling. Uh, some network structures are known to impact how disease is spread through spatially organized systems. So our plan is to read and synthesize the below list of papers, which cover the importance of network structures and dynamics on disease spread, relationship between infection dynamics and social structure in an animal population of badgers, and the implications for the prior two approaches uh, for policy responses of the COVID-19 pandemic. Our group project is titled Stochastic Adaptive Networks for COVID-19 in Hospitals. Our goal is to more realistically characterize the risk of COVID-19 spread among healthcare workers in an effort to identify interventions and behaviors with the greatest effects. The motivation is to capture the unique heterogeneity of this smaller network within a hospital. To that end, we'll use an extended SEIR model of infection to account for symptomatic and asymptomatic infections. Then we'll evaluate two different network approaches a bottom-up stochastic model on an adaptive network, and a top-down exponential random graph model, both tuned to matching parameters. These parameters will be informed in part by empirical data from a large academic hospital, as information and interventions alter behaviors and hospital network structure. We have an aggregated mass of intercity commutes between Russian cities. Flights, trains, buses. It makes a graph of nearly 1k nodes connected by 20k weighted edges. Now we plan to embed this with a graph convolution network, so that we could look at cities from a bird's flight. Speaking of birds, they might look alike due to evolutionary convergence, yet the devil is in these details. For example, you should never feed your pet pterodactyl with chicken's food. Our goal? is to compare topology of population and commuter flows between geographies. Result, authorities of like communities can exchange relevant knowledge, just because tactics for a village vary from those for a city. That is what we are having fun with at the channel named All You Need Is Page Rank, because that is all you really need, as long as you have data.
let's get it squared. Medics are today's rock stars, working the front line. Michael Jordan said, talent wins games, but teamwork and intelligence wins championships. I can hardly find examples of more regulated jobs. These days, they experience major disruption of everything. The normal organization structure and processes are meant for normal times. Things have changed though. Organizations restructure in order to respond to increased demand. It's pure luck that many medical workers have several specializations and can jump start into action. Just one question. Who of those good people suffers the most? Who is the one to say it? Who is at risk at burnout? In desperate times, decisions are made at blink of an eye. We suggest there is a solution, an intelligent one. Graph Neuronal Networks. Effect of voluntary distancing measures on the spread of COVID-19. The case of Mexico City. An effort by the Taco COVID-19 team as part of understanding and exploring network epidemiology in the time of coronavirus. Since the beginning of the epidemic, many countries have implemented non-pharmacological in interventions such as physical distancing and mobility restrictions to reduce the spreading of the disease and flatten the curve. In Mexico City, physical distancing has been driven by the closure of non-essential economic entities such as schools and universities. However, individual mobility is not restricted. The Mexican government's request has been to maintain a healthy physical distance and stay at, ho at home as much as possible so the physical distancing on a voluntary basis where not everyone abides. Here, we aim to model the effect of individual cooperation rates on the spread of the disease. In other words, what is the fraction of cooperance that is required to have a significant reduction in the total number of cases? The aim of this project is to find a correlation between intrinsic characteristics of COVID-19 and the differences in the structure of transmission model of various countries. Modifications in the sequence of the original strain showed four main recombination sites. As a result, three main variants of COVID-19 have been reported so far. A detected in China and US, B in Asia and C in Europe. The difference in the sequence of variants changes the infection rate, which should be detected in the transmission model. To model the transmission, we adjusted random graph algorithm by adding some restrictions on the probability. If two nodes which are infected individuals live in two different cities, the probability of them being connected is proportionally lower. If the reported date of the destination node is 21 days later than the reported date of source node, they are not connected. The graph is directed and connected. All nodes have an incoming degree of 1. The average of outgoing degree is 2.5. Hey, we're team COVID Diffusion. That's Weiran, Lewis, Jonathan, Owen, and Betsy. We're going to be implementing an agent-based SIR model to attempt to quantify the effects of public health measures on disease dynamics. The agent-based model will generate proximity networks as agents move within a certain distance from each other, and it is on those proximity networks that the SIR dynamics will play out. Something we're interested in is how local policies like social distancing and maybe smarter agent movement patterns might mitigate the spread of an infection within cities. So our agent-based model will begin as a tool to study these changes. Then we're going to expand the model to include migration probability between different cities so that agents, whether or not they're infected, may move between cities and thus between different social policies, which will result hopefully in a more powerful metapopulation model that may reveal the importance of public health synchronicity in today's world. Thank you. We are team core network consisting of members with experience in mathematics, physics, computer science, and biology across a range of academic career stages. Our overall goal is to examine the patterns of clustering in COVID-19 epidemics. To do this, we will construct two networks works, one of countries and one of U.S. counties as nodes where edges between them represent time series correlations and epidemic trajectories. We will use community detection approaches to identify clusters of locations with similar epidemics. Then we will identify commonalities in terms of geographic positions, positions, socioeconomic factors, 
travel and migration influences, and other variables that are associated with these location clusters at both global and U.S. county scales. Thank you. This group is the Simplicial Models of Social Contagion Reading Group. The members are Ben Braun, Eric Schertel, Masa Haraguchi, Alexander Michels, Runia Roy, and Kishore Vasan. Our motivation is that social distancing is one important aspect of any pandemic control. It is necessary to understand how it can interplay in disease spread and simplicial models can capture higher order social interactions beyond the pairwise interactions that we see in network models. Our plan is to review, understand, and critically analyze a paper published last year titled Simplicial Models of Social Contagion, and to understand the difference between representations of social systems as networks and as simplicial complexes along with the implications for each of these representations. Hi guys, um, so we are the MST team for, uh, MST standing for the minimum spanning tree, and uh, we're going to essentially be using this method uh, to consider um, how, we can, how we can translate correlations between uh, countries and cities into a, net, a network tree structure. Um, and, the, and the point of uh, creating a network tree structure is, is that we're considering the most important uh, correlations. And from those most important cor correlations, uh, what can that say about uh, the COVID-19 uh, infection, the spread? Um, and then secondly, we're going to relate that um, to the financial markets. So uh, considering how this COVID-19 affects, for example, uh, different, um, different financial markets such as currency markets and how the two trends overlap with each other. Thank you. Um, hi, so we are, uh, we want to read about adaptive networks in network epidemiology. And the reason why we are interested in this model is that it allows us to model the population response to in, in a spreading epidemic. And uh, we believe that it's a, it's a model that's easy to understand and at its basics. And uh, it models the, the things that we see during an epidemic and that the things that we are seeing now pretty well. And the, the methodology that we are trying to follow is to uh, review the existing literature and evaluate what the models are and what the assumptions are. And then after that, we can look at possible extensions and especially how they relate to the current COVID epidem epidemic that is around us right now. There have been many recent reports in the news suggesting that people are at a differential risk of contracted COVID-19 based on their race, sex, or socioeconomic status and increasing evidence that poor minorities are disproportionately bearing the burden of morbidity and mortality. The goal of our project is to investigate how different social structures and processes influence disease transmission. We will use exponential family random graph models as a generative tool to simulate dynamic temporal contact network with structural properties that correspond to real social processes, such as homophily by socioeconomic status and race, religious affiliation, or greater daily exposure via contact during work in low paying service jobs. Disease transmission will then be simulated across these networks and key parameters of disease spread will be assessed over time using stochastic individual network models. This approach will allow us to determine how host covariates affect particular outcomes, such as the differential likelihood of infection, distribution of R0 or pace of spread through the network. Hello everyone, this is the video of uh, the group Agent COVID-5. This group features Ben Brown, a brilliant mathematician, Jay Malofsky, a brilliant ecologist, Raymond Peng, a brilliant uh, financial mathematician, and myself, Vaishak Saraktash, a political scientist. Our group studies uh, diffusion on networks, and specifically we are looking at how heterogeneity of vertices uh, on, on a network affects the speed and spread of diffusion. We are working on an ABM model that builds on an SRI model 
And if time permits, we will experiment with initial growth rates. Stay tuned for findings. All right, let's uh, have a little hand applause for all the small groups. Uh, thank you for all those great presentations. I did, when we asked you to do this, I didn't at all imagine that uh, you would be able to put in so much rich content in one minute. So I'm very impressed. Uh, I'm just going to go through a couple of things for our small group participants uh, to keep in mind moving forward. Uh, one more detail about the certificate of completion that I didn't share last week that I'm just adding here. So you have to self-certify your attendance. Um, there are some questions about that. I guess I should have changed this to self-certify. You have to participate in these discussion groups. You have to contribute to the group presentations. Um, but then finally, highlighted here, in addition, we'll ask you to submit a project abstract to be included with a compilation that we'll post. So anytime we ask you to do a presentation, we'll ask you if you want us, if you're okay with us sharing that as our, and on YouTube, uh, you're totally okay saying no. Um, but for this last thing with the abstract, we are asking you to submit something that you are okay sharing. So feel free to include some, some things that you might not wanna share more globally in your presentations, uh, but the abstract is something that we will share more publicly. So just a um, quick note about that. And then finally, remember next week, we'll have these live parallel sessions. So you don't have to pre-record anything. We'll give you more details about that on the Slack channel for those of you who are in the small groups organization. Um, these will be 10 minute slots, seven minutes of presentation, three minutes of discussion. And here are just my suggestions for what to include. You can include whatever you want, but for those of you who like structure, uh, just some things to think about to include the motivation and research questions. So here I'm going to go through this thinking about this for project groups, but the same, can, the same structure works well for reading groups. I'll make a few comments about that at the end. So motivation and research questions, and then talk about the background context and related work. What's new in what you're doing? How does this differ from other approaches? And then talk about, well, what are your methods and approach to this problem? present preliminary results if you should happen to get that far. I know that many groups won't get that far and we feel this is a useful exercise even just thinking about the steps before the results. Uh, discussing limitations, potential pitfalls of your approach, and maybe some alternative approaches is a good way to go. And then talking about next steps and future work. So these are just some suggestions uh, for how to structure these very short presentations. 